So we're currently in uh, Monte Catini, just on the A11. We're going to head back to the area of Bukhari, which is... Uh, British Army officer Matt Simons is on a NATO mission in Tuscany near the city of Pisa. He has a rental car and is armed only with a camera. But Simons has no eyes for the rolling hills of Tuscany or the leaning tower of Pisa. Unlike most visitors to this beautiful part of the world, he's here to scout the region's infrastructure. He's taking part in a reconnaissance and pre-deployment exercise for the UK-based Allied Rapid Reaction Corps. His training task is to find an industrial compound with warehouses large enough to house troops, military hardware and humanitarian aid. We might find the best facility in the world, potentially. It might also be full of equipment, stores, uh, forklift trucks, whatever it is. We're planning, the exercise is planning to get a force in in fairly short order. And emptying a warehouse could be achievable, but not in such a, such a short time frame. So we've really got to look for something which might be vacant or maybe indeed to some degree derelict that we can make some good use of. In the training scenario, Tuscany is actually a war-torn country called Petra Seros, which has recently been struck by an earthquake. NATO is preparing to send a rapidly deployable force to secure and assist an international relief effort, and Major Simons must find a suitable base for this simulated mission. Operational reconnaissance and liaison teams are often the first people to be sent in. Following any, any disaster or any intervention that's required, facts are what's important. What is the truth of the situation on the ground? And these soldiers, they're not covert, they're overt, but they're diplomats out on the ground, they're finding facts, they're passing those facts back to the headquarters. So when we deploy, we can bring the right equipment, send the right people to the right place in a timely fashion. For military personnel to operate on their own in civilian areas can be very challenging, which is why the Allied Rapid Reaction Corps prefers to train such liaison skills in real-life conditions rather than just in the classroom. Major Simons and his team have found a warehouse they think may be suitable, but they've been unable to gain sufficient access. It is about sweet-talking your way in, and unfortunately on this occasion uh, we weren't successful. We were allowed to take photographs from outside of the fence. Um, it wasn't quite what we would have wanted. Eventually, the team strike it lucky. They find a perfect location to accommodate the initial deployment. It's near the port of Livorno, has good road and rail access, and would be easy to secure. Well, looks like there's some fencing already established, which would only maybe be augmented by patrols and or... Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Ellis of the Canadian Air Force is happy with the result. We were very pleasantly surprised uh, to be received uh, very positively um, by uh, the local manager of this, of this uh, site. He's allowed us to use the top of his building to get an overview perspective, which has allowed us to really get a good uh, feel for the, the use and, uh, and, and requirements of, of this, this particular location. So we're very happy with the information that we've gathered. The next step for the officers is to make their recommendations. Once formal arrangements have been made, the Allied Rapid Reaction Corps must be able to deploy within 10 to 30 days anywhere in the world. I'm Mike Mühlberger reporting for the NATO Channel from Pisa, Italy.